Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Gnome Show. I am Joshua, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short film of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, anything else that I think is groovy. I hope that you will enjoy tonight's offering. Uh, tonight, we have The Kid in the Camera. Uh, this is by Grumbled, Enter Grumbled Entertainment. Let me go ahead and give them a sub. Um, and I like... Um, let's rumble. Once upon a star, there lived a boy named Caleb. He was a happy little tot of six years old, and on his birthday, he received a very special gift. His very own photo camera. Caleb loved the camera, so much that he took it out every day, snapping photos of anything he could. A picture here, a picture there, until one day, a terrible accident happened. And the camera broke. If it be one of these days, I'll have to get you on audio and you can fucking see how awkward I fucking am. Kalen didn't sleep a wink. Haunted by thoughts of his once perfect camera late into the night. I don't know, that I'm usually better in conversation. Caught his attention. at the window and there stood on the other side of Kalen's bedroom window a large winged creature hello there young okay so either he's on meds um, or he's got issues that greeted the creature I'm the Kipsneed your sleep fairy sleep fairy ah fairy that is correct replied the Kipsneed my job is to make sure you get a good night's sleep, but it's come to my attention that you haven't been resting at all lately. I'd like to know the reason why. Caleb had never heard of a sleep fairy. My parents told me not to talk to strangers. strangers? Good advice. I'm no stranger. I yes, know you are. All the girls and boys around the globe. I that doesn't that give me any comfort. Their homes, their names. Why, I even know your name, Caleb. Now, would a stranger know your name? Maybe. Caleb Depends on how far you went down into the trash. No, I you, guess you, not. You, if you, must you give me an anxiety bug. It's my camera. See, see, okay. see, see? The, uh, um, uh... <laughs> I wonder, like, if this kid is, like, uh, his brain is trying to fucking repress whatever he's actually seeing, and this is what he sees, but a dude with a camera at his window that says he knows all the fucking boys and girls around the fucking globe, it's fucking creepy. Just like Hi, new viewer, how you doing? Tears welled up in Kalen's eyes. Let me see. Then the Gibsonid had an idea. Why don't I get this camera fixed for you? Perhaps that would help you sleep easier. You could do that? Of course, and I know just the place. A factory in my home world. I'll lead you to the portal. Just follow my voice. Uh oh. And the Gibsonid disappeared into the night. This way. 
Pied Piper, anyone? Close behind the Kipsney. Snapping photos to mark the way in case of getting lost. Smart. I mean, you know it's a trap. At last, Caelan reached a house. Oh, shit. Seems quite abandoned. Very much abandoned. And dark. But there yep. was the Kip's Needs voice again. Beckoning. The portal to my home world's inside. Come along. What the fuck? Alarm bells are ringing, Charles. I must have my camera fixed. So, in spite of his obvious fright, Kalen marched into the home. Hey, sir, um, have you ever uh, read or heard of House of Leaves? Oh, shit. There's that, that, that thing. Portal, my ass. That looks like you're about to get eaten. Yeah, that's that's a serial killer's basement right there. So, um, the the house House of Leaves is uh, about a family that moves into a house. Uh, I think it's in Maryland, uh, um, but uh, they find um, um, a space in their house that shouldn't be um there's a movie that was eventually made kind of sort of like it but the book is better um uh and uh there's a whole expedition into the interior of the space that shouldn't be uh and it's all wrapped in another narrative that's going on with like um like odd detail it's it's very it's very uniquely written i i would recommend getting the audio book uh but also getting the hand copy or the uh the the book copy uh because it's really nice uh and uh it kind of deserves to be read in the f in the um in, no color out of space is uh is a, a call of cthulhu tale um and call um the uh, it's in the same, well, no, uh, well, okay, so, Color Out of Space, that was a particular organism that, that came down from the cosmos and wasn't supposed to be here anyway, and was, uh, really just trying to get off planet, uh, it just happened to fucking be absolutely anathema to life here, um, the, <clears throat> um, the room that is, um, uh, I, I think Kevin Bacon may have been in a movie recently that kind of has this topic in it. Um, but they find a, a door and it leads to a space that goes on infinitely. And inside the space, like it feels like something is watching them and it, it is alive. Uh, and it goes on for it's, it's, um, there, um, it's very. It's very unique, uh, and then it's also written. Uh, there's some. There's another narrative like that's tied into it. Um, it's been a long time. I read it when I was in college, um, but it has this. Uh, it's just the the narrative uh, based on. Like so, like all right, so. 
uh, on the top. Uh, okay, let's go back to your uh, if the walls could talk. So um, um, here's an idea. You, uh, uh, one of the walls said that we're all human. So what if there's somebody in that wall? What if that was a human? What if that used to be a human? Or what if that's just something like, you know, that is taunting you? Uh, to find something else um, like imagine if you found like a tiny door and it didn't lead to wonderland it just led deeper into an interior part of your house that shouldn't be there uh, and the farther you went in the the more lost you got and the farther or the harder it was to find your way back um, you know that kind of thing the the mo- uh, the the color out of space like man <sighs> Um, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the tale that it's based on is, is, um, the, the descriptions are even worse than like other ones in the movie, but the movie did it really good justice. Um, I've always liked Nicolas Cage. <clears throat> I, yeah, no, I've always liked Nicolas Cage. Like, I don't, like, I, even even in his, like, uh, like slumming times, like, he was always interesting and entertaining. Um, I, I wished Ghost Rider had been given better treatment. I wished they had been serious about it. Um, because uh, Blade uh, proved that you could have a successful Marvel title in the horror genre that isn't specifically designed to be marketed to kids or teenagers. Um, It proved that you could have Constantine in the future. Uh, It proved that you could do something harder edged. Um, And they didn't run with it. Uh, Ghost Rider is full on horror. Like you could have had an entire fucking franchise that ended up not even being all about Ghost Rider. Or it could have been, like, you know, that was the overarching, you know, like, a story arc, but, like, there's so much in there with the, um... Oh, what was it? Um, Sons of, um, Sons of Midnight and that whole run where you had, uh, Johnny Blaze and, um, like, um, what's his dude, the dude with the spikes and everything, the Red Flaming Skull... And Zarathos and all that stuff, like uh, you, yeah, you know, they could have done so much, um, but they kind of blew it with Ghost Rider a little bit. I, I mean, like the the best they did in that movie is when he rode up the side of that building, and I was like, yes, that's prime Ghost Rider right there. Like I I love that shit. Yeah, man, what could have been, like uh, like Blackheart, they they that was not. That was fucking utter trash. What they did to Blackheart, um, I did like how they per, um, the how they portrayed um, um, Mephisto. Um, that was good. Um, I wish they had given more money to. I, I, see, this is where you could have like uh, pressed out two movies from from a storyline. Like you could have like given everything more time to breathe. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, it's, it, and those villains, man, anyway, um, Blade was kick-ass, wasn't it? Like, I, I like the, the second one was really good, uh, and I appreciated it more later than when it initially came out, but the first one. You know, I went in and see went in to see that movie my by myself, and it was fantastic. Like it was some of the best films uh, filmmaking I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, let's finish this off real quick. Hold on. Sorry, you two people. You're gonna get a little bit of the. Uh, um, the broadcast, uh, the stream broadcast. No shit. Who is that? I I told you it wasn't a bug. God damn it. 
Some weeks later, authorities discovered the basement. Mm. The rest of the boy was never found. Never, ever, ever talk to strangers. All right, now let's uh, let's head over to Grumbled Entertainment real quick. So this is, uh, I assume this is probably their feature uh, debut. Bravo on that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll trim, maybe I will trim that down so the last part makes, or like, the, you know, so I don't know. Um. Oh, it, it, it killed mine. Like, I, I didn't even bother. Like, I, I um, uh, it, it's... I've seen bits and pieces of the um, Infinity War and uh, Endgame, but um, I read through the original comics. And um, I'm eventually going to get to it. Um, that's one of the movies I'm going to cover when I can actually get into um, like doing like movie reviews, like the, the full-length ones. Like I'm, I'm still working out how I want to... Um, do that on my channel um but um i get it's like i i wish that they had nebula uh, they had let nebula have her moment in the sunshine and it would have made a little bit more sense um because um Mef or um uh in in the comic books thanos got his he got he got his wish uh, he became one with the cosmos, uh, and because he did so, he relinquished uh, uh, his his physical form, uh, and uh, it was um, now possible to remove the glove from his hand, uh, which Nebula did, uh, and um, this was the moment that. Doctor Strange was looking for, uh, or not Doctor Strange, uh, Adam Warlock was looking for, um, it was, it's much easier to fight in an emotionally fucking broken and angry nebula that now has the ability to do what she wants, uh, uh, than it was to try and take a very stable and very pathological, uh, being like, um, Thanos. Um, because, uh, although Thanos has a history of not feeling worthy of the, um, m m uh, master strokes he wants to commit, uh, and it is in there, he's like, he's always felt like he didn't deserve to fucking have it all. Um, he was definitely, like, willing to go through it, especially because, Really, the entire point of uh, get doing all this was so he can be with death. Like, that's all he's ever wanted. He, he, he snapped out half the population of the cosmos so that he can impress, impress death. Ladies and gentlemen, he did it for a woman. That's what the Infinity War was about. And I think that's why they went and did it somewhere uh, another way. Um, but um, if you look, uh, also, um, if you... Uh, Thanos has a very complicated, um, um, bitter uh, rivalry with Deadpool, and uh, one of the reasons that Deadpool is not only like has some of the best healing factor in in Marvel, but he is basically immortal because Thanos cursed his ass. Like absolutely, if I was like I he, like you will never be with Death. Um, I think maybe he might have, uh, like, uh, figured a way around that at some point, or, like, you know, like, she's come to see him at some points, too. 
Um, and it's very sweet. And I, I wish, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Deadpool with death. Um, she's one of the more is- interesting entities that's been in Marvel. She's got some, um, <clears throat> she's more one of the more relatable, uh, gods in Marvel, in my opinion, because she deals directly with us. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, I mean, she li- she really has a crush on Wade Wilson, uh, and he's like, uh, uh, he, he <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, that's that's why Infinity War happened. Uh, it's that yeah that because he was trying to motherfucking become a god so he could be with death. All right, um, I'm gonna go and stretch my feet, or st- stretch my legs for a minute, uh, smoke a cigarette. Um, I'll be right back. Um, next up, um, do um, uh, do any of uh, well. Bleh. Has anybody played Skyrim? Because if you have, uh, we're going to be talking about the top eight worst decisions in Skyrim and whether we committed those when we were playing the game. I would like to see um, uh, whether I committed some of these. I probably did, but like I, I, I did have a really good time in Skyrim, so I'm interested to see. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in five. Uh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> 